Uh, I think we're going to be starting now. So thank you all for joining. Good day, wherever you are. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I believe we are joining from different parts of the world and uh, hope we are all doing well and having a nice time. Uh, so today we are going to be having a session and uh, it's just about joining to graduate school. So we are going to be having uh, a speaker that is going to be sharing his experiences with us and he's going to be answering some of the questions we have about you know graduate school and things around graduate studies. So I am Ibrahim Paladipo and I'm the research lead for Ignite Research Academy. This event is organized by Ignite Research Academy and Ignite Research Academy is a platform for developing students' research skills and uh, also for developing competencies. And uh, this platform also helps to build a network of comp competitive researchers in Africa. Uh, so for now, we are focused on Africa and uh, we hope to improve the level of research and the level of um, the level of research development in Africa. Also, currently, IRI is um, developing capacity and providing resources to undergraduates, graduates, and individuals that are interested in, in enhancing their knowledge. So um, this series, this whole series that this event is one of them is just about um, inviting graduate students or people that are already in graduate school and inviting people that are already also in the industry to come and share some knowledge and experiences about some of the things that can help, that can help motivate prospective graduate students and prospective people that want to get into the industry and things like that. So the series aims to give a deeper insight into what graduate students experience and uh, also help to clarify maybe some of the confusions that people have about graduate studies. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't know whether I want to really go to graduate school and I'm not sure whether I want to go to graduate school and uh, maybe graduate school is not for me and things like that. So these um, whole series is going to help you clarify some of those confusions. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's all this series that's all about. So uh, with this introduction and then with this introduction, so we are going to get started with today's events and uh, I'm going to be introducing today's speaker. Hope you are all following me. I hope I'm not talking to myself. Hope you can all hear me. Anyone can just signify. Yeah, we can. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So today's speaker is going to be uh, Homo Balaji Lawal and uh, he's a graduate research assistant at the University of Illinois, Urbana, Champaign. I'm not sure I got that pronunciation, but anyways, it's, he's a graduate research assistant at the University of Illinois and um, he's doing his um, PhD program at the university. He also did his master's program at the same university. So he's going to be sharing from his wealth of experience some of the interesting things that he has experienced and maybe some of the things that he wish, or maybe some of the things that prospective graduate students can do better than him while he was applying to graduate school. So uh, welcome, Mr. Bolaji Lawal. Hope you are here with us. Yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction, yeah. Oh, okay, we, we can really hear you very well. Oh, um, is it any better now? Oh, I think it's better now. I can hear you from my side. I hope others can also hear. All right, so let's just get started. Uh, so I, I would like to start with uh, an introduction from you. I've already introduced you, so maybe you can just do a quick intro about yourself. You can just tell us about yourself and what you do. Yep. Yeah, uh, definitely. Thanks a lot for the uh, invites. Um, like Ibrahim said, my name is Bola Jilawal. Uh, I am a current graduate student at the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. This is my second year of my PhD program. I major in civil engineering with this focus on structures in particular. And um, I had my undergraduate and other degrees in Nigeria. So I had my undergraduate at the University of Lagos, and then I came um, to the US for my master's and now continuing for my PhD. So yeah, I think that's a, a brief background, I guess. Oh yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. 
So you said you did your undergrad in Unilag, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, cool, cool. So can you just uh, tell us briefly about your journey to graduate school? How did it all start, you know, when you were doing your undergrad? Did you decide during your undergrad that you wanted to go to graduate school or the whole journey started after you finished your undergraduate? So you can just give us a brief story. Um, I think I kind of lost um, the audio during the question. Oh, okay, you, you lost the audio. Okay. So I, I kind of lost the audio somewhere between the questions. So if you could repeat it again, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. So I was, the question was, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your graduate school journey, your journey to graduate school? Um, you know, like, did you start, did the journey start from your undergraduates? Or no, was it no. after you finished your undergraduate program that you decided that, oh, let me go to graduate school? You know, that's not fair. You can just give me a brief. Well, yeah, uh, in my case, it did start in undergraduate. So um, I, I, in, in Unilag, in, we have this um, internship, six months internship you have to do in your, fourth, in your fourth year. So during like my internship, like working with, I was working with like a structural design firm and just some of the problems I saw or like I was working with or I came aware of kind of um, made me more interested in like why do these problems occur in the first place and you know are there other ways to solve them or how can we prevent these things from happening so that's kind of how I got um, interested into into looking more into furthering my studies and then I spoke with a couple of senior colleagues who had already, you know, started their own graduate school to have more information on what exactly it's all about and how to go about it. And when I um, decided to come to the US, I knew or I realized like one of the requirements was to take the GRE and also uh, have some test of English exam, either TOEFL or IELTS. So um, when I graduated, I started preparing for the GRE um, exam, which I took, I think, a couple of months after I graduated before going for NYSC. So pretty much for me, um, my NYSC was pretty much just used to apply to graduate schools. Uh, hmm. I, I didn't really... Unfortunately, I didn't do anything productive for the people I was working with that much. But yeah, so I was just basically searching for schools. Uh, I was looking more into the professors that were doing research in areas I was interested in and looking for professors that had openings for in their research group, looking to take new students who could fund, fund me. So I was pretty much doing that throughout my NYSC and then I got some feedback and decided to apply to the schools where the professors gave me potential promising feedback and eventually I got I got an offer from from where I am now. So yeah that's kind of how I ended up here. Oh that's that's a very interesting journey. So like on the average like how many emails you did you send to professors? <laughs> Oh, well, I, again, I, I feel it's everybody's journey is unique. So this is yeah. not like, um, uh, this is not, um, this is not like the only way to do it, or this is not maybe not the yeah. best way to do it. I just should say that. But yeah, in my case, I did send out a lot of emails, I, I, a lot, because I checked a lot of schools. Uh, I, I don't know if um, people are aware, but there's this um, thing called the US News ranking, which kind of, gives uh, the ranking of different programs like in the US, uh, like how different schools rank. So you can see like the top schools in, in, the, in the programs. So I, I actually got that ranking and I checked for like the average um, GRE score. Actually, because I'm in engineering, I was more interested in the quant score. So I checked for the average quant score of those schools, like the students that have been admitted 
and any school that my score was good enough for, I checked your website and, well, not any school, but like, I think maybe like the top 70 schools that my score was good. I checked their website, check out their professors and anyone doing something I was interested in, I sent them an email. And of course, not many people or not everybody responded back to me yeah. or not everybody gave me a positive response. So like I said, this is probably not the only way to do it. But in my case, one thing I also did was I, I, I didn't get the, um, if I didn't get the response after some time, I actually would call like those professors. And in fact, the professor that um, ended up offering me an assistantship didn't respond to me at first. But when I called, he picked up and we discussed, and then he went back to check the email and check because I attached like my CV and transcript and all of that. Wow, and then nice. he went back to check that, and then he was, you know, he got back in touch with me. So I feel that's also like something maybe most people don't know in that if you don't get a response from email, it's not necessarily the end of the journey. If possible, if you could call them, that's also something that could help. So. Yeah, that's also something I, I did in, in my case that I found really useful. Oh, that's interesting. That's the first time I'm hearing someone say they called, they called in a professor, I mean, in Nigeria, saying they called a professor in the US to ask about their application. I mean, that's quite interesting. Oh, that's well, cool. yeah, I feel it's probably, yeah, probably it's not common, but the thing is, if you check like their website, they have their emails and their phone numbers there. So yeah, they true. do kind of don't mind if you call them. Of course, you have to kind of uh, note the time difference. Yeah, that's true. And know the kind of times you can call because <laughs> you can't call, call that. professor at midnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you yeah, know, can't true. call just based on Nigeria's time. So it has to be calculated. But yeah, I, I don't think, I never like got anyone who was angry at me because I called them. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really nice. I mean, it's... I'm sure people that are listening that have learned maybe something new from what you just said. <laughs> someone said, someone in the chat said, call the prof. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. this is like the first time I'm also hearing this. The other time I've had the kind of interaction with a professor outside Nigeria was a professor called me himself, right? I applied to maybe, you know, these are common work scholarships, right? Yes. So I applied for, I applied to a school, I think it was University of Lincoln in the United Kingdom somewhere. And then the professor called me for like an interview. And then the professor was like, oh, you yeah, are this, you yeah, this. This is my application. And he just asked me a couple of questions. So that was like the first time I had that kind of interaction. But I've not like called, I've not initiated the call before. So it's strange. You know? But it's yeah, also- I, I think for us, it might be strange, obviously, because at least for me, you know, the, the kind of interactions I had with professors like in undergrad is very, you know, yeah, you can't probably just go into their office or, <laughs> or yes, like maybe exactly. even in class, you can't just ask a question or something. So yeah, yeah, I understand it's kind of may look strange, yeah. but it's a it's a totally different dynamic here, yeah, and I think they are more open to things like that. Yes, yes, yes. I get where you're coming from. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, that's kind of like the reason why it's very strange to us, the kind of place we are coming from. Because there are some professors that you can't, you can't even enter the office or you can't even say you want to talk to them. You can't even send them an email because some professors will feel like, who are you to send them an email? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the case when you, when you get to the US and some other nice countries. Thank you for sharing that part. So the, the next question I want to ask is about um, the whole application process. Like how difficult was it for you in terms of, you know, financial difficulty, in terms of, um, you know, electricity problem, you know, how did you manage all of those challenges? Because, you know, just like you said, now you, when you call a foreign number from Nigeria, they're going to charge you so much. I mean, for, for one minute, you can probably spend maybe 500 or even 1,000 sometimes. So I can imagine that you spent a lot during that process. So how did you, you know, manage all of those things? How did you manage with electricity? How did you manage with, you know, all those other factors during the application process? Yeah, that's true. It was financially intensive also because one, I mean, to take the GRE you have to pay, which I is not cheap, and I'm sure it's even more expensive now than when I took it four years yeah. ago or something. Yep. I also took the TOEFL, which I had to pay for. 
and emails you need internet to send emails so you need like lots yeah. of data and and also to apply to schools in the u.s is not free but i i don't know it may be possible for some people to get application waivers but in uh, in general you pay an application fee which yeah. is not uh which is not cheap hmm. so yeah it was a, a lot a really like financially tough time but like i said i was doing like this during nyc so i was getting paid by NYSC and for the people I was working for. So this kind of helped finance like that, um, that process. But I was also lucky in the sense that where I was doing NYSC, I wasn't, I, I was staying with someone I knew. So I wasn't like paying for rent or, you know, things like this. So I kind of had some help in, in that I didn't have to spend on maybe typical things that you other people may have to, to to worry about so i could kind of just use all my money for applications and all so yeah. that's that's how it worked out for me but uh, yeah that may not be so feasible for other people and yeah so that's definitely a big challenge i i, I think so i would encourage like people who, who try to apply to the us to always try and find out from like the graduate uh, coordinators if their application waivers for the schools they are applying to, because some schools might give application waivers so you don't have to pay that fee. In my case, I didn't get any, but I'm sure like there are definitely people who got. And uh, so I think that's something worth finding out. That could even be a motivation to apply to a school that probably wouldn't have applied to. So um, yeah, I think that's definitely something worth considering. Cool. What about like electricity? Did you have issues with electricity? Did you have to run generators and things like that? Well, because I wasn't staying alone. I mean, I wasn't staying alone. So I, oh, yeah. you know, that, yeah, I wasn't um, kind of, yeah, I didn't have that burden because I mean, the farm people were staying with around their gen, I, like I wasn't buying the foil or anything. So again, I was uh, fortunate in, in that regard. So, yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that part as well. It's interesting. All right. Uh, so let me go to the next question. The next question is, um, you know, there's this general saying by Nigerians or by Nigerian students that if you survive in Nigeria, you can survive. I mean, anyone that survives in Nigeria, that survives the academic rigor in Nigeria can survive in any university in the world. <laughs> what, what do you have to say about this statement? Is it a mix or is it is it like a mix of myth and reality? Well, I, I feel maybe a mix of myth and reality, but I definitely think there's a myth in the sense that, or at least for me, it also, I felt like it would be, I guess, easier like here than it was in, in, in Nigeria because, I mean, there are a lot of difficulties in studying in Nigeria. So I thought, no, like once you, you know, like it's a bit chilling, but, but Again, this is maybe it's chilling for other people, but this is just my personal experience, especially like in my in my first semester, it was not it was not uh it was not easy at all. And um I took just three classes, but like I, I remember very well like when I went met with my advisor and he told me, Okay, you'll be taking, you know, this, this and this class. And he specifically told me this would be like the most work you would have done in, in a semester before. And in my obviously, I didn't say this to him, but in my mind, I was like, nah, this guy doesn't know where I'm coming from. <laughs> okay. That's kind of my like, okay, maybe yeah. you know, he thinks I'm coming from like here, so he doesn't understand the kind of hustle. But it was really like intense because one thing here is like, at least the classes I took is they kind of give you like homeworks every week. Yes. And it's just like from the beginning of the semester to the end, you are constantly on it. And it's kind of, again, my background i don't want to generalize but my background i didn't feel was like as strong as other people in in, in my class because i mean most of what we do is probably you just get one textbook cram and you just <laughs> they you basically kind of what you learn is how to pass the exam i probably didn't yeah. necessarily learn the fundamentals i needed Mm -hmm. So it kind of took like more work to get up to speed with what they were actually teaching me compared to people who had better backgrounds. So there was definitely a lot of um, studying I had to do 
which was more than I would have done, I guess, before. So yeah, it was definitely more stressful, in, in, especially in my first semester. But I think um, one thing, yeah, kind of that helps you from Nigerian part is you're kind of used to struggling. So it's yeah. kind of maybe prepares you better. Yeah. But in terms of the level of academics itself, it's 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 tougher than I mean it's a graduate study, so it should be tougher anyway. But I guess just because you kind of are used to like hustling, so you kind of find a way to navigate through it. And yeah. also you have more supports in terms of resources here than you would have in that, that than I had in my undergrad. So there were like office hours where you could meet like the professor or the TAs to explain to you. You have access to like online journals and things like this that you know you don't have in 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 Nigeria so so from that aspect it made it uh, manageable I guess the, the thing I feel is here is that if you're willing to put in the work you would you would do well yeah like so far as you're willing to put in that effort but there is going to be it's not going to be like smooth chill yeah not just going to be chilling like you have to put in the effort but if you're willing to put in the effort you have a lot of resources to help you whereas i think in nigeria sometimes even if you put in the efforts it still may not be enough yeah. i think that's kind of one of the main differences but I, I i definitely don't think it's just like chill like you're not just going to wake up and sleep all day <laughs> and then like you still come up with all ears but yeah. I, maybe it works for some people but for me i, I didn't find it that way all right. Thank you for having <laughs> to clear that that whole idea of you know surviving anyway. <laughs> I think a lot of people just think about it that way that oh I've done in Nigeria, I can do anywhere. It's easy there. You know, there's this general say that it's easy there, it's easy there, it's easy there. I, I think there needs to be some Well, I I I at least for me, I think the reason is because quite a lot of people do well, like when you like for example, the average GPA is very high like in my program with the average GPA down was like 3.6 or 3.7 out of four wow, yeah, that's so that's, really... yeah that's very high so obviously yeah. when you look at that that's kind of gives the impression that you know it's easy because yeah. for example in my undergrad I don't know what the average GPA is but maybe there's only like in a class of 50 or 60 maybe there's only like five people that have above 4.5 you know so that's the difference is kind of in performance kind of tend makes you believe that okay it's easier here than than it was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I think the reason why the performance here is better is one, there's more resources, people yeah. help you more, and they don't want you to fail anyway because you have to rate professors and give feedbacks. Hmm. The professors want, I mean, they need good feedback, so they will do everything to give to make it a good experience for you as as much as possible. So they try to give you all the help. Some people will call their grades if people don't do well in their classes so in general people would do well whereas it's kind of like vice versa there where you know some you have people that like nobody can get a in my class or something <laughs> so the performance may be worse like back home but it doesn't necessarily mean it's uh easier yeah 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 thank you for that so um you you mentioned something where you were answering a question that you know at the beginning it was a little bit tough so what are some of the challenges that you faced when you first started the old graduate school thing? Yeah, I think the change, because it's, uh, I think the, the culture is different, the weather, the food, mm. uh, just like the old change of environment was different. You don't really know anybody. Mm. Um, you don't really know anybody. So I think one thing for sure that I, in my first in one of the classes we had like the first homework they gave us was very difficult for me and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was just you know up and down and I think I, I got a very bad grade maybe I had like 63 or something to 60 something wow. percent. and at first I mean I didn't really know like whether that was good or bad until I saw like other people were getting like 100 percent and I was like oh you know and then I met them, like, how oh, were you able to, like, I mean, we attended the same class, right? Like, it was, we were taught the same thing. So how how were you able to score well in this and I'm not? And then the guy told me, oh, we went for the office hours. And I'm like, oh, what's that? <laughs> so, like, 
And then they told me, oh, like, you know, they have office hours to explain and tell you what you need to do in the homework. So I was like, oh, interesting. And then the next homework I went for the office hours and then office <laughs> I did well. So that was when I also realized office, I, because I was just used to doing everything on my own. With kind of Nigerian mentality, like nobody helps you. You have to try to figure it out on your own. So that kind of opened me into like the advantages of how helpful office hours could be. So yeah, that's definitely one thing that I think was an eye opener for me. And then in general, the winter was really brutal because it was just too cold. <laughs> Uh, okay. I just had to put on like layers and layers of clothes to, to try to keep warm. But yeah, it, it definitely I, I it was really good how, like the weather weather in the winter. And um well I mean I guess if you don't know how to cook like a meal and it can also be put out because sometimes you probably <laughs> would want to uh you know it's like or something uh, <laughs> okay. if, if, like where i'm there like no nigerian restaurants or anything so you can't like go I mean, there's no way to like get that so you kind of might miss uh miss the food also so i think yeah those are kind of some of the things that were um off the top of my head that were difficult to deal with at first hmm, I, I like the food parts that you mentioned <laughs> you know a lot of people undermine you know that cooking skills because you know you have people around cooking for you and then one day you find yourself somewhere in the united states or united kingdom and there's no there's no place to buy food and there's nobody to cook for you and you can't start eating you know all the junks that these people eat <laughs> because the yeah food- it's totally different yeah exactly like for me like for example i think one of like the school cafeteria or something like maybe they just like the rice they just give you like white rice or something like there's no like <laughs> or no sauce or anything so I'm like what like what am I supposed to do with this you know like it's just like so totally <laughs> stiff. yeah it was like strange I'm like you know but maybe to them I don't know maybe that's just like the side portion of a dish or I don't know but like to me like what the I, I like I cannot hit <laughs> like that right just try not going to taste anything exactly right? <laughs> so it's kind of like totally different if because uh, you're not used to that and so yeah definitely that was an issue <laughs> interesting all right so the, the next thing I want to ask about is um you know when you were applying I don't know maybe when you were applying the year you were applying maybe you had things like you know all this tech guru software developers you know now software development and all these tech gurus they are like the in thing right they are yeah. very very much more attractive than going to school because you can come in you can learn software development for like six months and the seventh month you already have a job in somewhere in the u.s and you're already any like 1000 1500 usd and you're already i'm just exaggerating a little bit but but you yeah. get the idea right yeah so those things are kind of like very much more attractive than than going to graduate school compared to maybe when you were going to graduate school. So when you were going to graduate school, was there anything like that? Or was there kind of like any form of, you know, distraction that, ah, man, see my friends earning in dollar and yeah, and reading book and things like that? No, I, at the time, I don't think, yeah, I don't think it was that. I, th- I think maybe it was just starting, but I don't think it was as prevalent as it is now. Okay. So, uh, I, I yeah personally I don't think I kind of was looking into that direction or distracted by it but there was a, you know there were like a couple of students um that we did undergrad together at, at Unilag but they studied uh electrical engineering or computer engineering one of them and they did like some competition for Microsoft oh. and I think maybe they were like second or third and wow. you know they got like I had like off of that competition to work with Microsoft wow. in the US. So I kind of knew of like that, but then that was still more of like their degree helping them to um to get the job. So I yeah, there wasn't like that wave of of going into tech at the time, or at least I wasn't aware of it at the time. Maybe I would have gone into it. I don't know. But <laughs> oh, uh, but do you think you would have made a different choice if it tells me you're just going to go to school this year? And you know you have all these interesting things going on. Do you think you would have you know maybe decided that ah this is money, this is book? <laughs> no, well, I, that's I, not I the think, way to look at it. Still, I'm just exaggerating. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, I I think it, it should be something you're interested in because I mean, I 
I don't know, but I think like those things also like come with like challenges or like frustrations. And if it's not something you're like probably interested in, you might lose lose focus or lose track of how and uh, not have like the desire to do it. So I mean, if that's like something you're interested in, uh, then you should pursue it. But at for me at the time, my my interest was in structures, so I don't think I would have I would have gone into it. I, or I don't think I would have felt I could do it because like I didn't feel like like I didn't have an interest in it. Again, maybe like if it was more popular, maybe I'd have been more interested in it. It's, it's kind of hard to say, but I definitely feel like. It should one should try to do something they're interested in, interested. obviously, and something that you know is kind of lucrative. Like, there's no point like being interested <laughs> in something that is that doesn't pay. Yeah, that's true. Stuff. So, that's true. yeah, there has to be like the lucrative part of it for sure. But cool. yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for answering that question. So I think that's a a very nice and perfect answer. So the next thing I want to ask about is um, you know, when you switch from Nigeria to US. There can be this feeling that you're not good enough, this kind of imposter syndrome feeling and, you know, this kind of self-awareness. You just start thinking that, am I really, you know, good enough? I'm coming from Inilag that is ranked maybe, I don't know what the ranking of Inilag is in the world, but, you know, maybe your school is ranked like top 100 in the world or top 200 in the world. And where you are coming from is like over 1,000 in the world. So did you once in a while get this feeling of imposter syndrome that you're not good enough? or maybe you're not what's being here or that kind of thing? Oh, definitely. Um, I definitely felt that it was like, wow, like, because in class, for example, you know, professor asks a question, someone answers it, and I'm like, I could never have thought in that direction in like one million years. Like, if <laughs> one million I'll, never, years. <laughs> I'll never get there. So I kind of would wonder, you know, how is this guy able to think in that direction? Like, wow, you know, these guys are like super good at you know this guy that I, so yeah i definitely would feel like you know i i don't know anything or like these guys are better than me and stuff like that which may be true i guess but i think one thing i kind of just came to realize was first of all fine you know they have a better background than me so they should know it's like but if i can you know improve myself one by associating with them one thing i believe in is if you associate with people who are better than you they make you better i mean so it's kind of it's not like a competition it's not like you know i, I don't need or i don't know i don't need to be like the best graduate student or whatever i just need to be like the best version of myself and best ways to you know if you associate with people who are better than you they make you better you know more you learn what you don't know from them and hopefully there might be one or two things that they didn't know that i teach them also so that's kind of one way I feel like is 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 to associate with people who are better than you and you know just try to learn, read more things, just expand your knowledge. But I think yeah, it should be expected. <laughs> I'm not coming from the same level of education as these people, so I shouldn't expect to be on the same level. I think that's 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 just a fact. But yeah, of course, it's kind of diminishing, especially if you were I don't know one of like the top students in your undergrad and then <laughs> you know it's you kind mean? of like vice re, it's a reversal <laughs> exercise yeah. and then you're like yeah, okay. the of the erase. And and not then, you know yeah, yeah. You're just like any other guy but yeah, yeah. i think if, if you get over that if you act, i mean just have to accept that you know they have like yeah. a better background or they have a better starting point so it's all yeah, to, to try and catch up on things like that yeah I think another important thing to also do along the line is to know, you know, when you have the opportunity to show yourself, to show some of the things that you have, you shouldn't shy away from that, you know, because if you shy away from that, too, it's kind of worsening that feeling of not being good enough. Yeah, I think that's actually a very good point in, in the terms of um, one thing I, I, um, I kind of feel like maybe it's just me or Nigerians in general, not Nigeria, but maybe me. Yeah, I kind of feel like, yeah, initially I kind of have this like, even if I knew something, like a question, like I probably wouldn't answer it anyway. Like if, if you know, someone asked, like I probably wouldn't answer, like I didn't care, or like, you know, that was just like that feeling of not wanting to put yourself out there. 
yeah yeah which i yeah that's kind of one at the beginning but yeah and then i realized oh that you know people here like even if they miss it or something they always like have that they're always bold enough to like put themselves out there so i think yeah, yeah. that's definitely something something useful to do definitely yeah is there something you can recommend to people that can help them build that that uh that confidence maybe you know maybe people can be talking to people or presenting stuff to people or things like that. So the reason why I'm saying this is during my undergraduate, you know, we used to do like group projects. I don't know if you had group projects when I was in Obafemiro University. I did my undergraduate in Obafemiro University. So we used to have like group projects and then we had to present the group projects to professors at the end of the at the end of the year. And what I noticed was for me, I used to, I used to be one of the people that were really hard working and people that used to invest a lot in the project. But when it, it came time to present the project, I used to, you know, shy away from presenting the project. So one of my supervisors noticed that and he actually called me one, one of those times that what I was doing really makes sense. That I would do all the work and I would get to the point of presenting and I wouldn't be able to present the work I did. And other people will be taking away the <laughs> glory of the stuff I did. Like, it was very important for me to also learn how to present and how to face people and tell them stuff you've done. So maybe things like that, or do you have any other recommendations as regards things people could be doing to help them build that kind of confidence? Yeah, I think um, uh, one thing for sure is that, or one thing I try to do is that if I have, for example, an idea or something, you know, I would definitely try to discuss with, even if it's just one person, I would definitely try to like, you know, say, it, uh, I try to get it out still because sometimes you might think oh this is like maybe like the stupidest thing or something but then the person like oh you know that's actually reasonable this makes sense or something and then you feel like hmm, okay that's not so bad so yeah <laughs> i definitely would say like even if it's just one person yeah. always maybe like try to share like this idea you know this is what i'm thinking of what do you think get get some feedback and yeah definitely if you have like opportunities to like present even if it's just like a group of friends just to like get some practice and know how to present your ideas because you kind of know how to sell, you know, there's so, no, there's no point doing like all this amazing work and not being able to sell it. So yeah, definitely. I, I think um, if you make it just like two or three or four people that you kind of just present, make present to, to sell things to them and see what the feedback is. I think that helps for sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you for those points. I believe we are, I believe people just need a, you know, learning one or two things from this. So another um question I want to ask is, uh, you know, there's also this thing about saying school has come. You know, in Nigeria, there's this general saying that school has come. Although I think things are changing. No, 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 things are not changing actually because these <laughs> students have been on strike for like six months now. I don't know, six months is an exaggeration, but maybe like four months or three months, and people have just been doing a lot of different things. And I think these things actually reinforce that statement that school has come. But in the actual sense, what do you have to say about it? Do, is school really scam or school is something else? Or what can you say about the value of going to school? Uh, I mean, I think, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I mean, the issue in Nigeria is quite complicated. But I, I think in general, it's even if you end up not, you know, what, what you're doing is not necessarily kind of based off your degree or you know for whatever reason i still yeah i still think there is there's the value in education one which i guess is kind of like you know if everything comes to like everything like bad like everything is you know things go badly you can always fall back on your degree to, to as a backup and secondly there are just like different experiences you get in school that can help you in life you know collaborating with people in a group things like communication skills and there are just different experiences that that come from from school environment i think that help even if it's not directly like the skills you learn from a class and then you're using it in mm. your daily life but I, I think there is if you have the opportunity i think there's always um some value in going to school well that's that's an interesting way to look at it you know from the angle of other things you learn like going to school and i think another thing i also noticed maybe when i was also in school was um there was a time in my class i had some colleagues that used to brag 
about not having anything to do with lecturers or professors. Like I have people that used to say that I've never entered any professor's office before and they'll be bragging about it. Like this, this. I mean, I don't think that's supposed to be something to brag about because when you have the chance to actually enter your professor's offices and you can enter any professor's office anytime, I think it also goes to show that maybe you have something valuable that you, you can offer those professors or maybe those professors have said something valuable in you. I mean, what can you say about that based on your experience over there? Can you say something about, you know, having those kind of interactions with professors? Oh yeah, I think that's definitely important to have if you can have like some interaction and uh, relationship with professors. One, I mean, of course, you, I mean, you try to learn from other people as possible. Secondly, it just increases your network. There might be like um, a time where you need someone to write recommendation for you. And if it's someone that knows you, they can attest like, okay, I know this person, you know, this kind of person is, they can give you recommendations. You never know, you know, whether for jobs or for other things you may need it for. And it could be vice versa, like you could benefit from the professor, the professor, I mean, the professor could benefit from you, you could, I don't know, maybe he knows you and he's like, he has an opportunity, like, oh, you know, I know this guy, you know, let's, let's use him for, for this, I, I, I've worked with him or I've spoken with him, he was my student, this, this, so, you know, it's, it's a lot of possibilities that could come with um, interacting with them, I think, for sure. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, I think the last question is maybe just, well, just for you to give general advice to people, prospective graduate school applicants. So what are some general advice you want to give to people from Nigeria trying to apply to graduate school uh, based on your experiences? Well, yeah, it's, um, well, I think one thing people should, I mean, expect is probably not going to be like a smooth journey. Um, Maybe for some people it is, but I, I mean, typically I don't expect it to be smooth. And one thing is probably to just try and, I guess, research as much as possible about a program, the school, you know, the city, the environment you're going into. Or um, if you are like getting funding from a professor, you know, you're trying to get as much info on them, like, you know, what kind of relationship do they have with their students? Are they like hands-on professors? Or are they people that just leave you to do your thing? Um, but again, yeah, it's, uh, I think that's just trying to have as much information about where they're going to, the program they're going into. And, and uh, yeah, I think in general, that's kind of the advice, but yeah, it's probably not going to be as straightforward, uh, it's not probably not going to be a straightforward process. There are probably very a lot of bumps in the way, and so they should be prepared for that as well. All right, thank you. Uh, I think we're done with the interactive session. So at this point, I want to ask if anyone has questions, or maybe people have questions they want to ask you about graduate school, or maybe about your university in particular. Maybe someone came here because <laughs> this. They saw that you're at that particular university and they have a question to ask about the university. So people can you know, signify if they have questions, they can type the question in the chat or whichever way they want to ask questions and they can unmute themselves as well. I think everyone has the uh, permission to unmute. Why are you Oh, someone trying to ask a question? Just Okay, I think the person is not doing this amazing. Oh, okay, someone said strike has been on for five and a half months. <laughs> that's really terrible. That's almost six months already. And it doesn't look like this strike is going to end anytime soon. Anyways, I believe everyone is gonna... <laughs> doing one or two things. <laughs> and I hope the students are not just, you know, are not just there and not doing anything. Ah, okay, someone also said something about uh, overseas. Someone dropped a comment about uh, overseas that one who opens the mouth more knows the most. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. One who opens. Okay, I think what the person is trying to say is that the one that talks, maybe speaks out the most, knows the most. I mean, outside Nigeria. I don't know 
where the person got this from and maybe <laughs> they've uh, yeah, I think it's just saying that, you know, if you kind of like when you show yourself, then that's how people, like people will show themselves that people like they will say, Oh yeah, this person definitely knows oh, yeah. what they are Ascension, doing. Right? Kind of which in Nigeria is probably yes. like, yeah, it's kind of the people that are just quiet or something. That's where you're like, okay, yeah, this are professors that don't say anything. <laughs> but yeah. All right. I don't think anyone has any question. No questions? If no one has any questions, then we can find this quality there. Is that Larry really trying to ask a question? That Larry, come on, no. Can you hear us? Hello? Uh, I think two people are trying to ask questions. I'm not sure. One is iPhone. Ah, someone is bearing iPhone. <laughs> okay. And then Damilari, I think Damilari is also trying to ask a question. We can't hear you in case you are talking. So in case you are talking, maybe, maybe you can type out the question in the chat box. We can't hear you at all. Yeah. Yeah, you can ask, if you want to ask a question, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. And you can also type the question in the chat box. I can't see any question in the chat box. So maybe you are trying to trying to ask the question. I don't know why the audio doesn't seem to. Anyways, maybe we can just wait for like more minutes. If there's no question after one minute, we can just call it a day from there. All right, there's a question in the chat box. Oh, it says, um, what do you watch out for when you are searching for a professor to research with in graduate school? Um, I, I mean, I think first thing is to see, um, obviously, the, like the research works they have and if they have like current research projects. Um, one thing that could be helpful would be if it's possible to speak with their current students to kind of know what kind of professor they are as an advisor because unfortunately i mean some professors are like and probably all of them are smart anyway but like not all professors are good advisors so it's kind of useful to know what kind of advisor the person is and uh so if it's possible either from their current students or if you know some other students in the school then the does like some interaction with them. But I think definitely knowing the kind of um, advice that the person is, is also important, just apart from the fact that obviously like if you go on Google Scholar or whatever, you see their research works and you know, okay, this person is good and is doing stuff I'm interested in. But I think it's also important to have just what kind of advice that the person is because uh, I think the relationship with the advisor is key. Like regardless of the work you're doing, I think the relationship with the advisor would be key in, in any graduate student professor relationship. So yeah, I think trying to have as much information on that as possible is, should be important. Oh, so basically what you're saying is beyond the academic and the intellectual part of things, it, the social and emotional part is also quite important. So much yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's the only question we have. That's the only question we have. So I believe at this point we can call it a day. Thank you for, you know, creating this time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about graduate school. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope maybe some other time we can also call you to share some more experiences. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Yeah. Oh, someone just asked a question. Maybe let me just take this one before we call it a different person. Asked, uh, do you recommend an associate professor or full professor? I'm not sure what this question 
he's saying exactly but do you, do you get the question i mean i see the question i mean i don't know i think it depends because um the i mean an associate professor is someone who is still kind of building i mean they're trying to become tenured like, like a full professor right so there's yeah. they're probably going to be more um more energetic more hands-on I feel, and a full professor is probably, I don't know, probably has a larger group, probably less, less hands-on. And so um, I, I think it could work out well in both cases. I, I don't think there is probably like one answer for that. I, I think it would depend on the individual case. I, I think you could have associate professors that maybe was not a good fit for, for, for you. Uh, and the full professor was better uh, and vice versa. So I think it also kind of depends on the kind of uh, what you as a person prefer. Like, would you prefer to be in, in an hands-on of environments where you just want to be left alone uh, uh, and do your thing, or do you prefer you know someone that you have access to and and you can you know get feedback from constantly? Personally, I would prefer it to, to, you know someone that you have access to and you can get feedback from so that you know you're not doing rubbish and stuff but maybe other people prefer it the other way i don't know so i, I don't think that there should be like a general answer for that i, I, I think it should depend on what what's what you're more comfortable with cool cool all right uh okay another question do we search about schools and apply first and then check if the school has a scholarship GRA or something uh, that's a weird question <laughs> Um, I mean, again, I don't think there's like one way to go about it. I'm sure there are people that have done that, but personally, I, I don't recommend that because, um, again, this is just personally applying to schools, you know, costs money. Yeah. And if you pay like the ap application fees and then there's no openings, then I, I mean, of course, if you can, uh, you know, and you can afford it, then what's the point? So I would always recommend searching for openings first. I mean, I don't think anybody would, pro maybe they would, but I don't think anybody would promise you like an admission or offer like without you applying. However, you could get like potential, you know, promising feedback. Someone tell, okay, you have a strong record. I, I, I encourage you to apply, stuff like that. You know, something promising and then you could apply for, for, for to that kind of school. At least there's like potential there rather than just applying blindly. But that's simply be because of the financial part of it, not because it doesn't work. Like there are people that apply and then they get the funding after. So it works, but just from a financial point of view, I, I wouldn't recommend it. All right, thank you. I think at this point we need to consider it one hour already. Thank you for your time once again. And I really appreciate, you know, all the information and all the experiences you've shared. And uh, I hope everyone has learned one or two things and we'll try to implement some of those things we've picked from this session. All right, we are also going to have another session tomorrow with another graduate student. So in case anyone wants to attend that, I think that's going to be at the same time tomorrow, 8 p.m. West African time. Yeah, so you can check out the same link, the same time tomorrow. All right, thank you everyone for attending and listening as well. So see you tomorrow if you attend and you know, and see you some other time if you don't attend tomorrow as well. All right, so we can call it a day at this point. All right, thank you. And uh, have a nice day or oh, have a wonderful day, nice, wonderful, what's the difference? No, just have a fantastic day.